All right, Shelly, thank you so much. A little bit of rain didn't bother these guys. The Republic of Texas rally is in full swing this morning. Thousands of bikers rolled into Central Texas yesterday for the start of the big party. Austin police are cautioning riders and other drivers as well to be safe out on the road. Police worked 254 crashes during the ROT rally weekend last year, three of them deadly, one of them a motorcyclist, but not because of the rally. Just like last year, it's a no refusal weekend here. Police will obtain a blood search warrant for suspected drunk drivers who do not want to give a breath or a blood test. Time now 606 and Governor Rick Perry is raising eyebrows this morning after comparing homosexuality to alcoholism. Here's what Perry said when asked if he thinks being gay is a disorder. I may have the, the genetic coding that I'm inclined to be an alcoholic. But I have the desire not to do that. And I look at the homosexual issue as the same way. Barry's comments come just days after a controversial move by Texas Republicans. The party approved language to support voluntary psychological therapy to convert homosexuals to heterosexual. And in our sound off this morning, we want to hear what you think about what the governor had to say. We've already had nearly 400 comments on our KVU Insider Facebook page. Here's one of them, Valerie. She writes, and there goes my respect. Alcoholism is a dangerous genetic inclination. Homosexuality is not. If you're gay and not hurting yourself or anyone else, you shouldn't have to, quote, decide not to be. And Tony says, so for years, people preach that gays are born that way. And when Perry says it, he's attacked. Either you're born that way or you're not. And it is biologically an abnormality or the human race wouldn't propagate and manage to survive. You can share your thoughts, too, by logging onto the KVU Insider Facebook page. We'll see you on Monday for another KVU Sound Off Topic. Austin City Council members burned the midnight oil last night. A long night session wrapped up just about two and a half hours ago. That completes our agenda. That objection will return at 3.32 a.m. Wow. City Council members tackled a 122-item agenda, including this early morning talk about challenges to property tax appraisals. Council members also approved a portion of permit and building fee waivers for Seton's new teaching hospital. The hospital requested $2.4 million in reductions, but council only approved to decrease fees to $902,000. Austin Mayor Lee Leffingwell says the partial waiver is not fair because the city approved to waive fees for the UT Medical School. City Council also voted to hire two law firms to help with three lawsuits against the city. The lawsuits stem from the deadly shooting of this man, Larry Jackson Jr., by former Austin police detective Charles Kleinert. Police say Jackson went to a central Austin bank to pass a forged check and then ran when Kleinert confronted him. Council approved contracts for $315,000 and $370,000 to hire those outside attorneys. Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl is in San Antonio this morning. Today, doctors will complete his reintroduction process into society after his years of captivity as a prisoner of war. And while many are calling for the military to begin a criminal investigation against him, Army officials say Bergdahl must first get used to America all over again. As KVU's Joe Conger reports, many are calling for the military to begin a criminal investigation against Bergdahl. Mm -hmm. Army officials say he must first get used to America all over again. The plane has landed, and Sergeant Bergdahl's next and final step towards reintegration begins in earnest at a nearby military medical facility. He disembarked from the plane with the rest of the passengers, not needing assistance, and was quickly rushed to a waiting ambulance. He comes to Brook Army Medical Center, where the U.S. Army brings all of its returning POWs for their final medical and psychological help under reintegration. Special doctors will work with him here as the Army debriefs him. All the while, Bergdahl will be introduced to current events that he may have missed in the five years since he was taken captive by pro-Taliban forces. His family arrived too, escorted by Army South officials. They'll be staying on post, and for the first time in so many years, they are expected to see their son. Army doctors say the timing of that reunion will be up to Bergdahl himself. Once he arrives on post, Sergeant Bergdahl will be taken to the sixth floor's psychiatric unit in a special ward that is reserved for high-value patients. That's the latest here in San Antonio. Now back to you. All right, Joe, thank you. New developments this morning about some top American beers in America's Money, where you can now find the ingredients for your favorite brew. How about that? Plus, 32 nations, 64 matches, 
and a month-long tournament. Now, we're not talking about beer still. We're talking about football or soccer, some call it. Fans across the nation keeping their fingers crossed that America can bring home the gold.